Welcome to this episode of the Employee Advocacy and Influence podcast. My name is Bradley Keenan and I am the founder and CEO of the Employee Advocacy platform Disseminate. And this is the final uh, final installment of the four-part episode that is a sneak peek into a book we are creating, which we plan to release in Q1 of 2023. And the idea of this book, as I said in the previous episode, so apologies to have to listen to this again, is that it's essentially 101 tips on how to run an employee advocacy program. The book is in draft form. and We still got to go through the process of uh, cover design and proofing and uh, uh, yes, producing the book, but it's it's there. So what we want to do is is essentially take a random tip from the book and I'm just going to talk about it for a few minutes and with a view that it's great to get feedback from people, what they thought about that tip, and it also helps us expand on the ideas to essentially make the book better. So as we did in the last three episodes, I'm going to ask Alexa to give me a number between one and 101. Okay, so Alexa has given me the number of 86. Okay, number 86. Rome wasn't built in a day. The key to community building is consistency. So when we speak about consistency, we, it can sometimes be a little bit overused because, you know, everybody talk, it, you know, it's almost like half of social posts on LinkedIn at the moment about the power of consistency, but there's a reason behind it in that it it is true. So when it comes to an employee advocacy program, it's about, it's not about the volume that you put in on day one. So it's not like load this thing up with 50 pieces of content and then a year later, come back and do it. It's about consistently adding fresh perspectives and fresh content to your program. So when users come in, they see fresh content and that they essentially know that this thing is alive and it's it's breathing. So you have to be consistent with adding content to the platform is one part of it. But the other part of it is actually communicating with the community to um, to build it. So I'm not sure, obviously, some people will be familiar with, um, you know, things like uh, Facebook groups is a good example. You can get two Facebook groups on the same topic and one will have thousands of users in it and it will have a high engagement rate. And the other will be, you know, 50 users and there's no engagement rate yet. The topic is fundamentally the same. The difference in those programs is, uh, sorry, in those groups is that the person running the group is consistent with either moderation or posting new topics in for perspective, to get perspectives of the community members, liking community members posts, all of those things, which essentially, as I said before, at, is it make, the program breathe and give it life and that's the thing that a program leader needs to do and needs to do consistently there's no point just doing it on day one so one of the big fears that people have when they launch an advocacy program is you know are, am i going to have enough content so we like to think about content not just about it being time sensitive so you know you produce a blog post today it it's valid today, of course, but depending on what you're speaking about would depend on how long that's valid for. So having a, this concept of evergreen content, meaning that it can be reshared in the program over and over again, is another way of building consistency because that piece of content you added this this month um, essentially could be reserved to the user in six months time or three months time if they haven't already shared it. So it's making sure that when people come into the program, they know what to expect. And that is, they expect fresh content. It's one part of it, one part of the consistency. The other part of it is that they understand that somebody is there building this thing. So one of our clients, she does an amazing job of interacting with the posts of the advocates. So she will almost like every single post that's shared through the employee advocacy program. And that sounds like a lot, but in reality for her, you, she's running a relatively small program, about three, 400 people in it. Not everyone shares every single day. Um, most people are sharing twice a week. So for her, 
she's just going in and just you know looking at the logs and saying yeah i like all these things so the the advocate is seeing the person who runs the program is giving giving them that positive affirmation that this thing exists and it's still growing and again that's something that she does consistently so once you launch your program build a set of rules or a framework or a process whatever you want to call it that is what you do consistently that will make users know that their program is alive and breathing now if you're happy to listen to this outro i've got a little bit of bonus content coming at the end that any social media or marketing manager would consider to be an absolute gift so don't go anywhere so firstly, I wanted to say thank you for taking the time to listen today. If you enjoyed today's episode and you want to be notified of future episodes, please do hit subscribe. And if you got value from today, I'd love it if you could either rate us or even better provide us with a review. We started this podcast so we could help people who are either looking to launch employee advocacy programs or already run programs at the moment. So the more feedback we get from our listeners, the better we can do this. So here is the bonus content that I promised. If you want to find out how active your employees are on social right now, if you click the link in the footnotes for the show, we will create a report for you that will show you not only how active your employees are on social, but also two competitors of your choosing. So you can really see how you benchmark against your competitors. And we will show you how this breaks down by seniority inside your organization and also geography. So hit that link and one of my team will be in contact. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this week's episode and we look forward to seeing you same time next week.